Hey guys. Hey we're, y'all. <laughs> we're on stop number two Woo. on on the road. And uh, we're in West Columbia. Yeah, West Columbia, Texas. And we'll talk more as the video goes on about why we chose this as stop number two. Yep. Um, but before we get into it, I wanted to show you uh, the town has done a really good job of highlighting local businesses and historic sites and points of interest that you might want to see while you're here. So when you stop in at one of those places, if you look for one of these brochures, uh, it's the visitor's guide and tour of West Columbia and it will show you where to find everything. This has been really helpful while we've been here. So yeah. thank you West Columbia for putting this together. Yeah, a real good piece and it will help you out. Um, so also wanted to let you know we're, we're here at a city RV park. Yep, we're at First Capital RV Park. It's a, owned and run by the city of West Columbia. And it's been very nice. It's yeah. full hookups, yeah. 30 and 50 amp pull through sites. Uh, there are not a lot of sites available and you have to call the reserve in advance yeah. to make sure there is something some, for you. Some nice trails too. We, we uh, took some walk and some nice trails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so stick around and you're going to see uh, we had a lot of fun in West Columbia. <laughs> We're excited to be in West Columbia, Texas, which is mom's hometown. Y'all remember my mom, Grammy Kay. Hi, how are y'all? <laughs> and some of y'all have said you wanted to see more of her. So we thought, you know, we need to make West Columbia one of our first stops. And since mom was from here, um, she was nice enough to drive down and join us. And uh, she's gonna show us a few of the sites around town. I never knew that this is where Stephen F. Austin, the father of Texas, was when he passed away. And actually he was here because this was the first capital of the Republic of Texas here at West Columbia. And Stephen F. Austin was Secretary of State. Sam Houston was the President of Texas and Mirabu, Mirabu B. Lamar, the Vice President. And they had uh, a convention here and while they were here, Stephen F. Austin apparently um, became sick with pneumonia and passed away. And so as we were going around town and visiting different sites, we found the, uh, the site of the McKinstry home, uh, which is no longer here, but this is where Stephen F. Austin was when he passed away back in 1836. He was one of the representatives, McKinstry, was on the committee for the Republic of Texas and his home here in West Columbia, he had, he had Stephen F. Austin as his guest when Austin became ill. And we're at his site at this point where the home used to be. Yep. So we're going to show you over here. So yeah, I never knew that this site was here, um, but there is a sign off of Highway 36 that leads you, it says Stephen F. Austin Historic Site. And if you take that little road, it'll bring you to this location. And this is the home, this is where the home of George McKinstry was. And it says he was a member of Austin's colony back in 1829. He was a soldier in the Battle of Velasco. He was a delegate to the General Convention of 1832, Chief Justice of Brazoria County in 1836. He built a home here in 1830, and this is where Stephen F. Austin was when he died December 27, 1836, just a few short months after Sam Houston beat him for the run for, to be the first president of the Republic of Texas. Uh, interestingly, Mr. McKinstry passed away just the next year in 1837. Okay, so as we're traveling through West Columbia and Mom's showing us around, we came over to the Old Columbia, Columbia Cemetery. Now, cemeteries are not normally on our list of places to visit, but we are very interested in Texas history. And what makes this cemetery interesting is 
First of all, the land that it's on was donated by Josiah Bell and his wife, and they were members of Stephen F. Austin's original 300 colonists. They are actually buried here. So this is Josiah Bell, and he is the one who, uh, uh, he served actually as a second lieutenant in the War of 1812, and uh, got to know Stephen F. Austin and his dad, Moses Austin, um, when, uh, w before they came to Texas, or before Stephen F. Austin came to Texas. And um, yeah, his family moved several places along the Brazos River. They settled here. He laid out two towns, developed a, planta a sugar plantation, uh, built the first hotel in the area. Um, and uh, it says that uh, his home here was where Stephen F. Austin, when he was in town, often he would be at the Bell home because they were such good friends. And uh, they would exchange letters on tax laws and education and regulations of the Mexican government and, and you know, things like that. And he is the one, he and his wife are the ones that out of their original uh, land grant as old 300 members, they donated the land for the cemetery. Um, there's also one of the men who escaped the massacre at Goliad, uh, probably with the aid of uh, the angel of Goliad that we talk about in the Presidio La Bahia video. If you haven't seen that, I'm going to link that down in the description because Presidio La Bahia, I'm telling you, you can feel the history of that place when you walk through. It's the oldest fort west of the Mississippi and it's got such an amazing story. So I'll link that video in the description if you haven't seen it. I think you might enjoy it. Um, but this is one of the, uh, the grave of another member of the original 300, uh, David McCormick. And he passed away in 1836. Over here is George Rounds. And George Rounds was from New York, but he served with Colonel Fannin uh, in the Texas War for Independence. He was at Goliad, but he escaped the Goliad Massacre, settled here in Columbia, became a, tra a tavern uh, owner, and um, he had begun uh, coming up with ideas to educate, it says, poor and orphan children in the community. And uh, his, his property was found to have oil and gas, uh, on it and so the family made some money and so they became a philanthropic family to support his educational interests after his passing. Now Samuel Tubbs Angier rests here and he's another member of Austin's Old 300. It says uh, he was a medical doctor who uh, came here into Texas in 1824 uh, with the Old 300. He became very active in the civil, civic affairs uh, participated in the 1836 Constitutional Convention and uh, helped to establish uh, the first public school system in the Republic of Texas. Okay, and then two over here right together. Uh, Nathaniel Hazen came to Texas in January of 1836. He uh, was led out to be shot with Fannin's men at Presidio La Bahia in Goliad, but escaped. And there weren't many men that escaped that, y'all. It's just incredible to find two of them here. Um, he went on to fight at San Jacinto under Captain William Patton, who Patton's family is the one who had the Varner Hogg uh, mansion at that time. Uh, but unfortunately, he passed away later that year in December of 1836 back here in Columbia. And then this is John S.D. Byram, who came here from Georgia. He was a delegate to the consultation in 1835 and signed the Texas Declaration of Independence in 1836. This is the site uh, where Henry S. Brown lays, and Brown was the commander of the Battle of Velasco in 1832. He led the Texian forces, and Brown County, Texas is named for him. He rests here in Columbia right next to Bird Lockhart Jr., who uh, he moved to Green DeWitt's colony from Missouri in 1826, settled in Gonzales, 
uh, participated in the siege of Behar with the Texan army, um, served as a commissioner to negotiate with Indian tribes, uh, helped with the Gonzales Rangers, and uh, he left the Alamo, he was actually at the Alamo, he left for supplies before the final siege, um, so he was not at the Alamo when it fell, uh, but Lockhart, Texas is named for him. So, I mean, just in a short time we've been here, we've only been here a few minutes, y'all, and, and they've got these signs erected and you say, oh, well, wait, who's over there? It's amazing how much Texas history lies here in this small cemetery in Columbia. And I'm sure there's a lot more, but just, you know, don't, if you're interested in Texas history, don't overlook these, these small towns because some of them have a lot of stories to tell. So we had a fun day yesterday in West Columbia. Yes, we did. And uh, we thought we'd talk to mom for a second to get her take on, uh, you know, yesterday when we went around town. Uh, what was your favorite thing about coming back and kind of visiting the area so far? Well, for one thing, it has not changed. I think you could open any history book and still see the same picture <laughs> 200 years later, but it's just fun. Reliving memories is the main thing. Meeting people that I haven't seen in a while and knowing that I grew up in this territory. Well, you know, speaking of that, it was kind of funny. When we pulled into town, uh, the park that we're at is actually a city park run by the city of West Columbia. It's called First Capital RV Park. And uh, they do have a spot that they reserve for folks who are traveling through for short-term stays. And uh, when we were looking for it, um, we stopped at the fire station, which is right up the road, to disconnect the Jeep because we weren't sure when we got here what, um, you know, how easy that was going to be. And one of the ladies that we met there said, I think I know your mom. And so that was fun, getting to meet her. And, uh, and we're going to go back, you know, later today and make sure that they have mom's phone number so they can reconnect. That would be fun. It's been about 60 years. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but, you know, going to the Varner Hog and, uh, you know, I guess when you, when you walk through there, do you remember your days of having cookies with Miss Ima? Yes, I do. We just lived about a mile and a half from here on the same street and we'd get our group and bicycle down and it was like our own little terror of Gone with the Wind and Miss Ima would be down on occasion. If she knew that we were there, she'd make sure we had lemonade and cookies. But we always respected her property. We didn't try to take advantage of it, but it was fun going back in time, seeing the home. And that's really neat. Now today, me. oh yeah, no, that's great. Now today we're going to go to a few more sites. Uh, we're going to go find the, they have a replica here of the first Capitol building. They have a, a town museum that uh, is a historical museum for the area that's open Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So today's Thursday, so we're going to go check that out. And, uh, you know, we'll see what else we can find, and we'll take you all along. Oh, but, ha, <laughs> Mom was Star's roommate again last <laughs> night because she stayed here in the RV with us, and that's happened before. Uh, but, yeah, how is it having Star as a roommate, Mom? Well, she knows I'm talking about it because her ears are back. <laughs> about 4 o'clock in the morning, I felt something staring at me, and I roll over, and here's Star sitting there looking, just <laughs> looking at me. So I took a side trip and came back. She had already made herself comfortable in the bed, <laughs> like it was all hers made up. But it didn't take long. She decided to move. So I got it back. She's fun. They're, you don't move without her, that's true. Yes, Star, I'm talking about you. She's looking at me like, you're talking about me. <laughs> you make a good roommate. Yes, you do. <laughs> Just don't take over my bed. <laughs> oh. All right, so uh, we're going to get out there. It's about time for the museum and everything to open. So come on, let's go check it out, see what we can find today. Okay, now our next stop as we're traveling through West Columbia is the Columbia Historical Museum. This is a museum right here on State Highway 35, right in the middle of town. And it is open Thursdays through Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. 
And uh, we're gonna go inside and look at some of their displays. Okay, so there's a lot of interesting uh, collections here in the museum. Uh, you know, West Columbia, or Columbia, was actually the first capital of the Republic of Texas. This is where uh, General Sam Houston was sworn in as the first president of the Republic. And the um, first capital building was located not far from this site. Now, this picture was done by Missoula Loggins, um, and it is of what the Capitol building looked like in 1900, just before it was destroyed by the great storm of 1900 that you would know from Galveston history. What's interesting about this, and this is super cool, I've never seen anything like this before. This is actually uh, what the building looked like at that time, but if you look closely, and I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but this is, there's pieces in here from the actual site that she found. So moss from the trees that were there, uh, pieces of wood from the building itself, sand from the cistern that was on site. She took what was there at the historic site and worked it into this picture, which that's really creative. Um, they've got a copy of the Texas Declaration of Independence, which of course, this would have been printed in San Felipe de Austin, which if you haven't seen our video on that, I'll put a link to that so you can take a look. Another very interesting uh, historical town. This building was actually a bank uh, at one time amongst its many uses, and so you'll see they still have the where the tellers would have been and there are actually exhibits inside on the other side of those, which makes it very uh, unique. Over here you've got bells from some of the steamboats and some of the paddle boats that came up the Brazos River. The Brazos, of course, was a major uh, river of navigation for commerce and transportation. Uh, from 1830 to 1895, the paddle boats and the river boats came through here and uh, many of them wrecked because the sandbars in the Brazos changed quite often. But it's pretty cool because they've got several of the bells here on display. And then I'm gonna bring in mom because mom's represented, her family is represented here in this museum. They have a copy of the, what year is it mom? 1946 copy. And it's a copy of so what? Uh, telephone directory and advertisements of the businesses. <laughs> and our family is in it. I found my dad under our number. Fritz Medlock. Medlock. Our telephone number at the time was 83W with two rings. And the way it was listed is 83R2. They knew the W was there. So it would be two rings. We were on a very busy um, cycle of phone calls. <laughs> but it's here among the different years of phone directories in our town. And ours is dated 1946. So I'm in a museum. <laughs> That's right. Now we've got an exhibit over here too that Aunt Freda uh, donated. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, this one right here. It's. Um, well, I don't know if it's, it's the uh, it's a single hole leather punch right here, and it has on loan from Freda S. Medlock, and that's Mom's sister, my aunt, yep. who uh, used to work here at the museum. She put a lot into this museum. She had other stuff she donated, which she also brought out was a picture. This picture right here. Uh, Freda had picked this up at some point ago. And she left it. It's kind of an overall history of Brazoria County, including it's the 75th um, history of 175th the county. Texas yeah, Revolution. Yeah, 175th, and it's a de decoupage or a, what do you call it when you put them all together? Mm -hmm. And she donated that. She has donated several items to this museum. We now have some back after mm -hmm. her death. We do have some of them back to the family. But this is a really interesting museum uh, and run by the Columbia Historical 
Association. So when you get a chance and you're in town, definitely stop by. There's parking right outside and also in back. And the Rosenwald School is right behind. And it is free. They accept donations. Um, and uh, so yeah, come on by and check it out. So now we're standing in front of the historic Columbia Rosenwald School. And I had never heard of this program until a couple of years ago when my Aunt Freda passed away and she lived here in West Columbia. She volunteered at the museum and the Varner Hogg Plantation and a lot of things around town, especially when it came to history. And uh, the folks were nice enough uh, when she passed away to let us have a reception here in the school. And this is a really interesting story. Um, the Columbia Rosenwald School is a grant from the Rosenwald Foundation of Chicago um, that's, that started the Rosenwald Project. And at one point they had over 5,400 of these schools across the United States, 500 of them I think in Texas, and only a handful of them I think remain today. This school was originally in neighboring East Columbia, which is now all part of Columbia. And I'm just gonna read the, uh, the placard here to give you a little bit of information on this. Uh, the, a grant from the Rosenwald Foundation of Chicago led to the establishment of a local school for African American students. The foundation represented a collaboration between Julius Rosenwald, who was president of Sears Roebuck and Company, and the noted African American educator, Booker T. Washington, to fund similar schools throughout the South. This is one of the few remaining of the hundreds built in Texas. The program began in 1917 and by the 1920s, there was a strong need for an African-American school in East Columbia. County officials used, utilized the Rosenwald grant as well as local funds and contributions from the African-American community to establish schools in both East and West Columbia. The building at this site, which opened in East Columbia in 1921, served children whose school had previously been sharing space with a nearby church. The school's first teacher was Mrs. P.A. Franklin. Columbia Rosenwald School included grades one through seven, adding an eighth grade by the 1940s. Also during the 1940s, the nearby Green Hill African American School consolidated with Columbia Rosenwald School. Students often attended classes after the fall harvest finished, though the school term had already begun. Subjects included spelling, arithmetic, reading, language, writing, drawing, geography, history, and science. Columbia Rosenwald School closed in 1949 after the West and East Columbia School Districts consolidated. The building here stands as an important reminder of early African American educational efforts in this area and as a symbol of the philanthrop philanthropic activity that made it possible. Now, from my understanding, doing a little bit of research on the Rosenwald schools, they were all built with the exact same footprint. They were always facing the same direction on the land, and the windows were such that the windows on one side of the building let in the morning sun. They were bigger windows, and on the other side of the building, the, the windows were smaller and up higher to still let in light, but to avoid the heat coming in from the afternoon sun. Um, they, uh, this one, after they finished using it as a school, it was apparently moved and used for several different things. And when they found it, uh, I believe in the early 2000s, it was in pretty bad disrepair. It had been used as a hay barn. Uh, the community came together, raised funds to save the building, move it to this location, which is right behind the Columbia History Museum, and to restore it. Well, we stand at the replica of the first Capitol Building of Texas, or of the Republic of Texas. And uh, this is right over by, I think, City Hall. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's not too far. In fact, what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna have a write-up on our website, rvtexasyall.com, and we'll put locations for all of the places that we've visited uh, in that write-up, so it'll be easy for you to find if you wanna visit some of them. Yeah, you know, this has been a, a real uh, fun, trip and and you know this is one of those things that it's a diamond in the rough i mean this is a small little town in texas and and it's one that probably gets bypassed most of the time and it plays such a major part of history and 
obviously a major part of Stacy's history because, <laughs> you know, without this little town, I don't even know if Stacy would be here because her mom was born in this town. Just right down the street. Right down, <laughs> yeah, literally. Just literally right down the street. A stone's throw from where we stand right now is where their house was. Yeah. Two, and it's, within two blocks. And it's really, really been... Yeah, you've seen all the stuff. I mean, there's a lot in this town, and we didn't even cover it all, but but it's worth the stop. I mean, if, if you're ever in and around the area, you know, the museum's only open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, but those are the times to come, because then you can, catch, you can catch it all in one day without oh, a problem. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got the Varner Hog Plantation and the replica of the first... Uh, uh, Capitol building and you've got uh, right in front of the Walgreens is where this building actually was at the time. Yeah, it was just, just before we came over here, we, we filmed a little bit over there, which we'll show you here, but it's, it was the exact location and, and they have a real neat demonstration. I don't know what you call it, but they got a, a bunch of little kiosk like things that tell all the history at this, at that time in Texas, and it, it's it's really cool. I mean, you could have a serious history lesson right over there. Yeah, you could take a mini monument walk. There yeah, mini it. Being, oh, yeah. there mini it is, M-I-N-I. <laughs> she, she's mini monument I, walk. I didn't know what to call it, but she with, got it dead with on. With many, many monuments, because there's quite yeah. a few of them. There's yes, many, there are. Many, and, many. And it, it's well done. It is, and, and that's one thing. I mean, West Columbia has really done a good job of highlighting their history yep and uh the folks here have been so great you know like we you know always talk to the locals because that's where you find some of the great places to eat some of the interesting historical sites um some of the stories of the town right and me and yep. mom <laughs> well that was that was and talking me. to a local right there but and you're looking for history right here <laughs> thank you <laughs> Thank you for appreciating. But, you know, we really appreciate you guys watching. And, you know, if you really like this video and want to see more history on Texas um, and just our life on the road, you know, we'd love you to subscribe. If you don't already subscribe, hit like on the video. Um, yeah, share it with anyone who you think might be interested. Yeah. And again, like I said, we'll put more information as far as the exact locations of these places that we've shown you on our website, rvtexasyall.com. More stuff on the website. Got to love that. And, you know, if you're watching this video and it's been up for a while, uh, you can still find it on our website pretty easily. We have a search feature on there and you can just go there and type in West Columbia and it'll come up. Absolutely. So I guess until next time. Safe travels. And happy camping. And come back again. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>